Next part of the pond building process will be to install the rebar and you will want to install the rebar before you install the forms in some areas. Uh, if you can imagine installing this rebar after I actually put the form in, um, it would be extremely difficult. So this is kind of a common sense process you're going to need to do along the way. You don't want to ever bury yourself in a construction project and of course that's what I would consider you'd be doing if you didn't install the rebar for the lower layer before you install the circular form. And uh, this rebar is we're installing is about 16 inches on center and I've actually got a few cracks. Remember this pond, I think I built the pond in 2009 and uh, so it's been about four years and I've got a couple of cracks and they're not they're hairline cracks but um, I probably wouldn't have had as many of them or the cracks wouldn't be getting a little larger if I put the rebar closer together so I'm going to leave that up to you just keep that in mind 12 inches on center eight inches on center when they build a pool the rebar is, I want to say, about uh, four to six inches on center or something like that. Keep that in mind when you're building your pond, especially if it's going to be a larger pond. What I'm doing here is creating the circular form, and in order to create the form, I need to notch the plywood at uh, a certain interval. So I think I'm about an inch and a half apart here, and the uh, and this is kind of just basing it off of my general knowledge of um, construction and and making circular things like this before I mean, you might if you're going to have a tighter circle you might even need to use different materials keep that in mind plywood might not work and I believe I'm using 3 8 inch plywood here and I'm doubling it up to uh, provide me with a little more strength um, for the process and you're going to need to cut what I was cutting with a 3 8 is I believe I was leaving a little over an eighth of an inch um, so I was cutting about a, uh, a little less than a quarter inch notch in the plywood itself and remember like I said spacing them about an inch and a half on center and of course I uh, it's kind of like you kind of see it's self-explanatory here I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but feel free to uh, ask any questions in the comment area and I'll see if I can help you. And then don't forget to read the comments either to uh, get some more advice uh, from, from questions already answered. What I'm doing now is leveling this particular section of the pond. And, uh, and I'm using a two foot level. Obviously, this isn't going to be enough. Um, it'll get you a, a rough idea, but uh, what I what I did here was I made a water level and that's simply just get a length of plastic tubing, plastic hose, and fill it with water. And of course you'll need to make sure all of the air bubbles are out of the tube and you can simply do that by holding the level up on one side and you can see uh, if you raise it up on the other side you'll see the bubble starting to come up. This gives you a better idea of what I was dealing with here, the length of the tubing. And a water level is realistically essential for doing something like this um, because if you use a regular level and your level isn't in, in the best condition and you go to fill this thing up with water you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about so make sure you use a water level um, it, this would be a plus this would be a bonus tip for anyone if you're not going to use it on the bottom layer on this section make sure that you use it on the top section and it wouldn't be a bad idea to double check everything after you're done um, if you can of course um, with the water level to make sure that everything is still in place. I, I would step on the forms. I had to to get into certain areas while I was building the pond and I believe I actually pushed one section down um, and of course I can see it now when my wife goes to fill up the pond um, there's a low spot so the water will kind of leak out of this one area and uh, you could run into the same problem even finishing the concrete if your concrete 
is um, isn't perfectly flat with the upper form at the upper level of the pond where the water is could could possibly overflow if you know what I'm talking about um, if you do not get that concrete flat um, and let's face it concrete shrinks when it's um, drying um, and if it sinks in just a little bit in one area you could end up with the same problem so uh, that's it for this video stay tuned for the next one and like I said I'm not going to be able to cover everything in this video I just kind of main reason why I'm making the video is to provide you with some pictures to give you some ideas but uh, I will answer your questions uh, in a timely manner so feel free to sit, put them in the comment area